Hey everyone, in this tutorial series, I'll go over how to create an inventory system such as this one. I'll go over the inventory panel, the hotbar, and possibly tabs and more. By the end of this video, we'll have a simple inventory system like this. And in future videos, I'll go over adding more features to it. Let's add a 2D scene. Let's rename it to inventory. And let's add a texture rack. So we can add in the background of our inventory panel. And then I'll drag in the PNG file to the texture property. And now it's showing, and let's just center it to the middle of the screen. So now we want to add slots to our inventory. So we can do that by adding a grid container. Let's move the grid container inside the inventory panel. And let's expand it to fill it. And now to add items within the grid container, we can add panels. And these panels will act as our slots. So let's rename it to slot one because we're going to have multiple of these. And to make something show, let's go to custom styles, click on the panel property, and then new style box texture. And click on that. And then within the texture field, let's drag in a PNG file that can work as our background for our slot. So it's not showing so far because we need to set another property called min size. And I'll make it 18 by 18 because that's the size of the texture that I just added. And now we can see it. So if we want to add more slots, we click on the slot and press Control D to duplicate. And we keep pressing that to add more slots. But as you notice, it's just one column. So to change that, let's go to grid container and add more columns. And I'll just add five for now. I'll try to fit it in and I'll add more slots to fill it up. Cool, now we have slots, at least visually. To change the spacing between the slots, we can modify a property called H separation and V separation under grid container and under custom constants. So let's check mark both of them and modify it to however we like. So I'll just set it to four for both. Now let's save this scene. Control S to save. And I'll just leave the name as is. Before we continue, let's add an item scene just so we can see items within our slots. So let's click the plus sign, click 2D scene, and rename it to be item. We're going to keep this item scene fairly simple and just have an image to show what kind of item it is. And for that, I'll add a texture rect. And I have two sample item icons, and I'll just add Iron Sword to the texture property. But I want to randomly select between Iron Sword and Tree Branch just for visualization purposes. So let's add a script to the item node. And within the ready function, let's randomly select a number between 1 and 2, or 0 and 1. So. To do that, we'll do the randi function and then modulo it by two. And that gives either zero or one. So if it's zero, let's just arbitrarily make it iron sword. So we'll set the texture rect texture property to be iron sword. Else it'll be one and we'll set it to be tree branch. Um, control S to save, and we'll save it as item scene. And for now, that could work as our item scene. And let's go back to our inventory scene. Now for demonstration purposes, let's add some items to some of the slots. And to do that, let's add a script to our slot nodes. So let's click on one of the slot nodes and then add a script to it. And we'll call this script slot.gd. And we want to apply the same script to all of the slot nodes. So to do that, let's click on one of the slots, hold shift, and then click on the last slot. And that selects all the slot nodes. And let's open up the script section and then drag in the slot.gd into the script property. And in that way, we applied the same script to all of our slot nodes. So let's open up the script and let's randomly determine if we should add an item or not to the slot. 
So before we do that, let's define the item scene so we can instance it. And also have a variable to keep track of the item within the slide. And we initialize it to be null. Now within the ready function, let's call the randi function and We'll say half the time there's going to be an item, so we'll do modulo two, and if it equals zero, let's add an item. And to do that, we set item equal to item class dot instance, and then we add the item as a child to the slot. Control S to save, and then let's try running this. Great. So we can see that some of the times we have some items in our slots and there are either tree branches or swords because we had that logic within the item scene to randomly determine whether it should be one or the other. Now let's close this. Now, in order to change the texture of the slots, depending on if there's an item in it or if it's empty, we would have to change the style box texture of the slot. And here's the code to do just that. So we preload the textures we create variables for the styles. And then within the ready function, we set the styles texture property to be the textures that we preloaded. And then we have a function called refresh style in which it checks whether the item is null. If it is, then that means it's empty. So we set the style to be empty, else we set it to be the default style. And if we try running this, we can see that there is a difference between empty slots and slots with items. So the empty slots are slightly transparent and the slots with items have a black outline and look a bit different from the empty slots. So let's close out of this. Now we want to be able to pick an item from a slot and also place an item into a slot. We can do this by first implementing two functions called pick from slot and put into slot within the slot.gd script. Within the pick from slot function, we remove the item from the slot node, but we add it back into the inventory node so we can move it around using the mouse cursor. Within the put into slot, we add the item to be a child of the slot. And at the end of both of the functions, we refresh the style so it either will change into the empty style or the default style. Now let's add a script to the inventory node. So I'll click inventory and then click the plus sign to add a script. And this is the code for the inventory script. Within the ready function, we iterate through all of the slots and connect any GUI inputs such as mouse movements or clicks to a function we define ourselves called slot GUI input. Within this function, we check to see if a left click has occurred. If we are currently holding an item, we will either place it into the slot if it's empty or swap it with the item in the slot. If we aren't holding an item but the slot has an item, we will start holding it. And within the ready function, I mean, within the input function, we will update the holding items global position to be wherever the mouse cursor is by doing get global mouse position. And before I run this, let's go back to the item scene and let me get out of this view. And let's make sure to set the Z index of the item node to be one so we can make sure it renders in front of the slot textures. And also within the texture rec node, let's make sure that the mouse filter is set to be ignore. So our mouse clicks aren't blocked by the item textures. So now let's click play. Let's go to inventory first and let's click play. And we can start swapping items between slots with mouse clicks now. And we can drag the item with our mouse cursor. And that's all for this video. And in the next part, I'll work on adding more features to the inventory system, such as adding a hotbar in which a player can select items to hold and some UI improvements. Thanks for watching. And if you found this video helpful, consider subscribing. Take care.